Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. And we're going through the entire book of Revelation. We're in uh, chapter 7 right now, just starting chapter 7, so you're just in time as we get to the good part. Um, chapter 6 that we had just finished, just completed, it was really uh, depressing, <laughs> really sad, really scary is all the God's wrath, you know, that we, we always associate with the book of Revelation. You know, we think about Revelation as being a scary book or filled with uh, punishment or God's wrath. That's chapter 6, right? And so as we head into chapter 7, we're going to start to receive some encouragement. That's good. You know, we want that, right? Chapter 7 is actually about God's protection. You know, I think uh, as Christians, we read Revelation and we're worried. We get scared. We're, we're afraid uh, of the end times and the things that are to come. But th you would only get that feeling if you read up through chapter 6 and then just stopped. You have to go on to chapter 7 to receive the encouragement. Chapter 7 talks about God's protection and how good it is to be a child of God. Let's just go back for just a second. If we remember, chapter 6, starting in verse 15, says, Then the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and the powerful and everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks and the mountains, calling to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, hide us from the face of him, this would be God, who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. The, the wrath of Jesus, right? For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? That's how chapter 6 ends, with this question, who can stand? Chapter 7 answers that question. Nobody on earth currently can stand, right? So they're asking who? Who can stand? So chapter 7 begins. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, not the literal Four corners. They didn't think the earth was flat. It's just a, a literary device. Uh, holding back the four winds of the earth, that no wind might blow on earth or sea against any tree. So you picture these angels holding back the wrath of God. Like the wrath of God is to come, the wrath of Jesus is to come, and these angels are holding back that wrath and they're waiting for something. Then I saw another angel, verse 2, ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. This would be the seventh seal that we haven't gotten to yet. And he called out with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. So what's this all about? Remember, Jesus is in heaven. He's standing next to the throne of God. John's watching all of this. This is John's vision, his revelation, right, of heaven. Jesus is popping these seals off this uh, scroll, this deed to the earth. And as he comes to the seventh one, right, before he pops it, uh, th they say, don't unleash the wrath until God's chosen people who are here on earth have been sealed. Now, why would they be sealed? Well, uh, a seal is uh, a way of saying that something is owned by that person. You know, if you own it, you'd stick your seal on it or you'd sign it. You'd say, this is mine, right? Property of me, <laughs> right? <laughs> you spent some time in the airport, you watch the baggage carousel spin around and you're looking for the suitcase with your name on it, right? Even though some of the suitcases, they look the same, you're looking for yours, the one that has your seal, the one that says it belongs to you. Now, what if I said, hey, here's a hammer, go and smash all the suitcases on the carousel. You have my permission. You can destroy everyone's bag. And you're like, yeah, destruction. And you get to one suitcase and the seal on it says Dwayne Johnson. Like that suitcase belongs to The Rock. What do you do? If you were smart, you'd put that suitcase off to the side, right? You wouldn't touch it. You wouldn't touch it. Well, this is what we're talking about. God says, I'm going to put my seal, my name, on my chosen people. Who? The chosen people of Israel. Oh, no, no, not Israel. You mean everybody. You're right. You mean every Christian on the earth. 
No. Remember, sometimes when you read Revelation and it makes sense, and you just say, you know what, that makes sense. It, it says Israel, right? It says Israel, and, and, it goes, and it goes on. Look, the Bible says it's 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from Judah, 12,000 from Reuben, 12,000 from Gad, 12,000 from Asher. These are all the, these are all the tribes, right? 12,000 from Naphtali, 12,000 from Manasseh, 12,000 from Simeon, 12,000 from Levi, 12,000 from Issachar, 12,000 from Zebulun, 12,000 from Joseph, and 12,000 from Benjamin were sealed. This is what the Bible says. So those are the literal tribes of Israel. Those numbers, 12,000 equal, when you multiply them up, 12 times 12 is 144,000. These are the people of Israel on the earth who have now come to believe in God. These are people who are Israelites, people who are Jewish, who are now Christian. And yes, this makes sense. Of course it makes sense. We think about why Israel? Why are we talking about Israel and not everybody? Well, because the Bible begins with Israel. The Bible begins with Israel, so why wouldn't it end with Israel? All the great literary works do that. They come back around to the beginning. They answer the question that was posed at the beginning of the book. The very beginning of the book, the very first pages of Genesis, Genesis 12, God says to Abraham, what? He says, through you, through you, all generations will be blessed. It was the promise God made to the Israelite people. And God has always protected the Israelites. God has always protected the Jewish people all through history. And so here we are at the end of days, and God says, before we unleash the wrath, there's 144,000 saved Jews down there on the earth, and I'm going to seal my protection over them. And it, and it is the Jews, because look at the very next verse. Verse 9, John, who has this vision, he looks back behind him at those people who are now in heaven with him, and he says, And this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number. So beyond 144,000. From where? From every nation from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. So John says the number of Christians in heaven at this time cannot be counted. It's a number from all nations and they're all waving palm branches and they're all singing worship and glory and praise to God. Why? because they've been saved. They're saying, we were saved. We were saved from this, and all the glory goes to Jesus, to him alone. The Jews, the 144,000 Jews that are on the earth, they have now come to this understanding as well. They've become Christians. They've accepted Jesus Christ as their savior, and now they join their brothers and sisters in heaven who uh, knew that already, who were saved by Christ. And I would just say, you know, th- this is more evidence that, that Jesus Christ is the only, uh, only way to get to heaven. There are no multiple paths to heaven. There's no, there's no multiple roads. Mul- you know, all paths don't lead to heaven. There's, there's not multiple religions. It's not, you know, we'll just be a good person and God will understand. God will save you. Acts 4.12 says there is no salvation by anyone else and there is no other name under heaven given among people by which we must be saved. Christians are not arrogant by saying that, you know, it's our religion and, and all other religions are wrong. It's not arrogance. It's, it's truth. It's biblical truth. These are God's words, not ours. Christians didn't make this up. God says this. God says this. There's no salvation by anyone else. And these millions and millions of people who are in heaven right now singing praise, they're singing that praise. They're saying, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and the Lamb and the Son and the Messiah and Jesus Christ. I hope you know that's true. I hope you know the one who sits on the throne. And I hope you know the Lamb, his Son. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.